Topping today's news, Prime Minister Philip Davis brings clarity to the NIB contradiction with Minister Sears. The Prime Minister also tells the opposition, stay tuned for details on the BPL deal. A young woman reportedly took her life early this morning as concerns continue over an increase in mental illness. And Bahamians, we celebrate and recognize International Women's Day. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News, and it is a pleasure to have you join us. Prime Minister Philip Davis is addressing the 1.5% NIB rate increase set to begin in July. Thursday, in the House of Assembly, Minister of Immigration and National Insurance, Alfred Sears announced the increase, revealing it will continue to increase by 1.5% every two years. The Prime Minister spoke to reporters today at St. John's College and defended the increase while also clarifying the alleged contradiction with Minister Sears. Well, well, well there's no real conflict. It has been well known for many years now that the, actuary, the actuaries who have been examining um, uh, NIB and its viability have been recommending increases in the rate. It started from 2001, where, where, they, recommend, where they saw that the need will arise in the, in the not too distant future. And then in 2006, they, they then upgraded that need to a reality and then in 2000 and 2000, that's 2006 and 2011 they made recommendations for increases in 2018 they then made specific um, recommendations and lately in 2008, 2018 Prime Minister Davis also took the opportunity to allay the fears that Bahamians may have in anticipation of the coming NIB increase my position has always been we need to find efficiencies. We need to look at, at how we could improve the, the cost effectiveness of national insurance so as not to put any further burden on our people. The country is going through a, 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 has been going through a crisis over the, since I came to office, and that crisis has been a burden on our people. And it's always been my approach to lessen the burden of our people. So I, I was not prepared to put any further burden on the people. But over a year ago, in regard to the state of national insurance, we indicated that we will look at, we gave sufficient notice, one year notice, that beginning July, come July 2024, we'll put a 1.5% increase the last and only rate increase for contributions to the National Insurance Board was 1% back in 2010. Members of the official opposition continue to pressure the government on details surrounding a deal that will purportedly see Bahamas Power and Light outsource its generation, transmission, and distribution capacities to private companies from both the United States and the Bahamas. During his contribution to the mid-year budget debate on Thursday, opposition member for East Grand Bahama, Kwesi Thompson, pressed the government for further details on what is happening at BPL. Here's what the, here's what the Bahamian people would like to do. One, there, there, there has been, uh, there was a meeting that was, was done between the Prime Minister and the Union, and there were statements about what uh, BPL is going to be transformed to. There's, there was also speculation in the public domain about any parties with respect to this deal. Well, the first question is, we would like to understand what it is that is happening to BPL. We, we'd also like to understand not just what is happening to, uh, to BPL, but what, what, is the, what is the fundamental change to the power distribution. You know, you first tell the people what you plan on doing. Once you've told the people what you plan on doing, then there's a scope. The scope is what you are looking for. The, the, you the, then the chair the recognized the honorable an member for Cat Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador. That's what you do. I, 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 Prime Minister Philip Davis rose on a point of order in response to the East Grand Bahama Member of Parliament. He explained that the details of the BPL deal will be made public at the proper time. 
The Bahamian people know what my vision is for BPL. I've said it over and over. And that vision is to provide to the Bahamian people affordable, reliable electricity. I, and, and that is my vision, right? And that vision will be achieved. The process of that will be revealed once I reach to that. And just stay tuned within, within months. In fact, just look at your bill now. It's lowered. But wait, wait at least before June and see it. Just stay tuned. Just stay tuned. Prime Minister Davis took offense to the opposition's notion that his administration has entered a secret deal at BPL. He explained that negotiations must take place before an announcement is made to the public. You all should be ashamed to talk with BPL. No, I'm not ashamed. You are, should uh, be ashamed. No, no, I, well, stay tuned. Honorable member. Let's stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. But even, let's talk about yeah. BPL. Why would, why would we want, we, we have the deal we are, the fundamentals of the deal are in place. But the, but, but, but the actual, but the actual arrangements, the, 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 the hardcore deal of the provisions, obligations on our part, obligations on the part of the other part, those are still being worked out. You don't go and tell the world what you're trying to do. At the appropriate time, the deal will be, it will be known. After poking the free national movement on its failed Grand Bahama deal with Oban, Prime Minister took the opportunity to school the opposition on how to achieve one's vision as a government. A difference between governance, you, you state your vision, and then you place the vision in the hands of people who know how to get it achieved. Yeah, right. Right. The problem you all had is you all, you all create some vision that you all thought was a vision. Right. And then what you do, you try, to, you try to do it yourself. And you don't know how to do it. That's wow. what you have, to, you have to get your vision and put it in the hands of people who know how to do it. During her contribution, Jo Beth Kobe Davis, the minister responsible for Bahamas Power and Light, revealed that it will take a total of over $1 billion to fix BPL in terms of paying off its debt and replacing old equipment. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Davis says after he met with members of the union, most employees at Bahamas Power and Light, they understand and appreciate what the government is trying to do. And finally, in this segment, the Ministry of Tourism, Investments, and Aviation funded some $300 million to rebuild and renovate the downtown cruise port. However, since the port has reopened, it has become a high tourist attraction. However, the extension of the cruise port gate has created issues for taxi drivers, such as Dale Gibson, who says that they are being targeted for soliciting along the sidewalk across from the cruise port. What's happening, if you pan around, you notice that they built a, a gate over there. Now, Mr. Edgefield that runs the port, he had to push the gate out further here. Now, but now the gate came out further here, now they're telling us we can't listen in front of the gate. So they're saying that they're getting the police and they're getting the authority from Mr. Edgefield saying that they don't want us in front of the port. So we, my question is, is, is Mr. Edgefield in the port running the Bahamas police force? Because they're telling us what we can't do. Now they're telling us we can't be on the sidewalk over here. They're telling us, they're telling us it's illegal to be on the sidewalk over here. So we're trying to find out what it is that we can do to make our working environment a whole lot better. So far, there is no commentary from the officials at the Nassau cruise port addressing those taxi drivers' concerns. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.